So how has the whole judging process been? It was actually exhilarating rather than exhausting because uh, it isn't often that one finds enough time or space to read, even working as a writer or as an academic. And to be told that one must clear enough time to read stacks and stacks of amazing new poetry is not a bad task to be given. And did passions run high around the judging table? I think passions always run high around poetry. But what was really, really good was finding how much we wanted to return to the same poems again and again, and how each time we returned, we saw them in a new light. So I, I was very certain of what I was going to say before I went to each meeting, and then had that lovely feeling of everyone sincerely coming to change their own minds as the ideas collided. And tell me about the, the prize for best collection and what the qualities of that book are that, that drew you all to make that choice. All the books on the best collection list shared certain qualities and I'm going to mention some very obvious ones at the level of production value. They were really well edited and they hung together as books, they were cohesive. You could slice them any which way and pick out a stunning poem or you could actually allow the book to take you on the journey. And what, what was notable about the one that did win is that it, it is one of those books that sets out a world and uh, refocuses uh, your own world. Uh, it really, really is worth reading it from beginning to end. And were there any connections between Kai Miller's book and the book that has won Best First Collection, Liz Berry's Black Country? Are there any parallels to be drawn between the two? Well, I think the parallel that might be drawn at a very superficial level is the ability to deal with all the zigzagging registers of language that we have, because there's no corner of the world where English isn't global now, and to be able to zigzag very much from a language that was continuous in a place, like Jamaica, or like the black country, and then the language that is reshaped by immigration, or by commerce, or by factory work, or by cartography, to have those things musically bending into poetic form is amazing. And maybe you could tell me a little bit about Liz Berry's use of language. Yes, well, the thing about Liz Berry's use of language is that it's never gimmicky, it's incredibly fresh. And uh, it's also very, very much rooted in a woman's experience, uh, but not in a heavily ideological way. So it, it's always the voice uh, of, say, a woman who's really good with a hammer or really good at factory work, who can find unexpected beauty in the most ragged places, somebody who can reappropriate the language of fairy tale of dancing in a red shoes and dance outside a factory. Do you think there are qualities to these collections that will appeal to readers who don't usually read poetry? I'm not sure who the readers who don't usually read poetry are. I think they're a bit of a myth because I think being confident about approaching a book of poems uh, has very much to do with experiences people have had at school or at home. But in fact, people are saturated with poetry, whether it is that they hear a religious book in a place of worship, or whether they're listening to song lyrics by Bob Dylan or Leonard Cohen. They're actually completely saturated in formal and beautiful language. And, and the thing is, are there poets nowadays who themselves will embody that bridge between the poem and the book and the non-book person's, perhaps that's very patronising the way, the non-book person's access to that. And I think both Kay and Liz have that ability to carry new audiences between the voice and the page.